Hey guys, what's up? It's Mech. Just here to do a uh, video on a, a couple different IFAC options I have to go for. Um, some of the ones that I've used for quite a while, um, just for some different purposes. And then go over a little bit of what I pack into it and why. Um, so first we have the, here on my name, I guess, Go Rig. It's a uh, Grey Ghost Gear. Like molly panel um chest rig they don't make them anymore i got them on clearance discount for real cheap uh so i have two of these and uh, this is just the one that i have set up with the fang gang uh some cheap usgi uh double mag pouches i need to replace these with some other ones um from uw gear a blue force gear canteen pouch just because it's super lightweight and uh, a little bit more durable than the USGI ones that I was using. A uh, Tactical Tailor Bale Fang pouch. Um, I need to change this out for another tourniquet pouch that I have, but mainly what this video is about right now is this. Um, comes with this mounting panel. That's why I like it is it's removable. I can pull this off um, or somebody can pull this off if they need to work on me or somebody else has it, I can rip it off and then open it up and I have everything that I need um, for life-saving interventions for March. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that for why I pack my IFACs the way I do um, and why I, I put in them what I put in them. The reason I like this is it holds pretty much everything that was in a uh, issued IFAC um, from the Army. So it holds everything plus uh, it actually does hold the tourniquet as well. These straps are actually elastic on the front and I really like that because it keeps one on the pouch um, in addition to the extra one I have separate. This right now is in a smoke pouch with a set of gloves. So that way I have a, and it's got a T on it for, I don't know if you can see that very well. There's a T I wrote on it in Sharpie so that instant access someone has a tourniquet to use on me or i have it to use on me if i need to and if i need an additional one it's it's in the ifac with the rest of the shit that i may need to grab so open it up it's got this velcro so if you wanted to just put this in a uh, velcro line bag you could stick that it's got this red pull handle and these red 550 um zipper pulls um feels like it's got the lining pulled out which is what i do for most of my zipper pulls anyway I pull the uh, little liner out of, it might still have them, out of the 550 cord and they make really good zipper pulls that don't come out. Um, and here's everything that I have inside of this. Um, I really like it. It keeps everything fairly well organized. Um, and I just like the, the slim compact use, or not compact use, compact size. Um, that allows, it only takes up two rows of molly. Uh, where I got this, I got this from Red Horse. You can get it off of um, STAC's website. They have it on sale for, not on sale. They have it for sale for 50 bucks um, with shipping. Um, well, 50 bucks plus shipping. I got it from Red Horse and it did not come with these straps. So I had to go to another place to get some uh, of these, uh, I wanna say these are malice straps. Uh, by Tack Taylor, but if you get it from S Tack Direct, they use or they sell them with uh, WTF straps, which are like a thin, like the laser cut, um, coated nylon, laminated nylon, which I really like. Um, and if I'd had the option, I would have gone with those just on the space saving, or not space, but the the weight savings might not be much, but those those little bits do add up um, over time once you start throwing on multiple things, and they are a little bit easier <laughs> to <laughs> route than than these. Uh, malice straps but it comes on there velcro's on so you can just rip off there is a velcro panel up here on the top i'm assuming for some sort of marking to say that this is a uh an ifac or a first aid pouch excuse the uh, movement from the camera i have it kind of precariously mounted i just got something real cheap to get these videos done i'll probably be upgrading in the future but like i said it has a tourniquet mounted on the front you could put any one of the uh coffee recommended tourniquet which is all i would recommend that you guys go with this just has a cap because i have a shitload of those um if it was a soft tee or any of the other options that uh Katsi recommends it should fit in here minus the uh emt tourniquet which are massive and should not be for ifax anyway um plus they're like 150 dollars per 
So it does, if you need to, you can completely fold it over like that to get to things a little bit easier. It has two elastic poles here, which I like for organizing my Israeli four inch compressed gauze and then quick clot. Um, you don't need to get compressed gauze and quick clot. Quick clot is expensive. I understand that um, everyone is on in some shape or form a budget. So if you just wanted to run two things of compressed gauze, that's completely fine. I just have a bunch of quick clot because army. So I have that. So that's what I put in my stuff. But if you just wanted to run two things of compressed gauze, that would be completely fine. I have a TC3 card. Um, these should be in all your IFACs. They're not in all of mine just because I don't have enough of them. I need to go through and make a bunch. This is just what was given to me by the army. Um, so I have it. These are really handy. Um, you need to be able to document everything, even if you're not doing stuff with dot mill. If you're for you know whatever other thing, you need to be able to document what care was given. So when you pass them on, there's some form of documentation showing what was done and when. Chest seal. These are the hyphen vents. Um, it's a twin pack, so you have two. These are folded inside of this, so you can fold chest seals and they'll be completely fine. Uh, and it doesn't just need to be a hyphen or a vent; it can be a non-vented. Just as long as you have a chest seal in there, that is one thing you want to make sure you do actually have. Uh, Halos are another good one. They are coming out now with packages that are already pre-folded to be able to fit into an IFAC easier. I have a needle, but it's because people I run with know how to use needles. You don't necessarily have to have a needle in there. It's not a requirement. Uh, uh, Army H2 IFACs don't even come with needles. I just have access to a few, so they're in all my kits that I can put them in uh, within reason. MPA, obvious reasons. Um, one, at least should be in your IFAC. If you're gonna carry extras, I would recommend carrying extra MPA. Size 28 French is a good reg. Um, good regular size for most people. Full size Sharpie instead of the stupid ones that you can get with the uh, IFAC, the little mini ones. I just prefer writing with a full size Sharpie anyway. Uh, this is for filling out uh, the 13A, the TC3 card, um, anything else I might need to fill out so that we're not taking Sharpie and, or taking their blood and putting a T on their forehead. Why not just have a Sharpie and a 13A and you can more accurately document what you're doing to your casualties. Um, I actually honestly prefer the Stadler map pens, the permanent ones, two Sharpies because you can get a finer point. They last longer in heat. I had an issue when I was at NTC that all of my extra fine Sharpies were, I guess ultra fine Sharpies were uh, dying from the heat sitting in one of my admin pouches. So I went to the Stadler map pens. Those never go dry in the heat that I've seen. Um, and it was over a hundred degrees at NTC. So I decided to just run with those for all my stuff. Plus you can write in, uh, write in the rain pens without it smearing. And that is everything that I keep in my IFAC and that's a pretty good basic. Um, like I said, this is my, if I got a scoot and boogie. Another alternative is the uh, modified or just even a plain saw 100 pound or 100 round pouch. Um, the, uh, the Molly pouch, that's what I used to run before I got this pouch. Um, it takes up about the same size, two to three rows of uh, Molly. And I had it in the same spot right over here on my right side. And that has that little Selkirk insert. You can get them on eBay. The uh, I think they're like Ranger or OD Green little insert. Sometimes they do come with the bungee uh, retaining cord to record them or to retain them to the soft out. Sometimes they don't, uh, but you can get like the visor stretchy things for those cheap uh, golf visors that kids get. Um, you can use those or any sort of shop cord that you can get. But I just like this because of the uh, slim form factor and it does hold a, a decent amount of stuff. And that, like I said, is 50 bucks on SAC or a couple of the different websites. Uh, another good option for belt mounted uh, for real slim is this uh, Coyote Tactical Solutions Burrito. Uh, this runs on their website for I want to say $45 empty uh, and it will come with a uh, a lock sack but I dumped that for one of the pouches or one of the bags that it came shipped with uh, this little plastic one to keep things relatively dry because of where I live in eastern North Carolina it rains a lot and there's a lot of rivers and streams and creeks 
um, that we may have to do things around. So I want stuff relatively dry when I can keep it that way. Yeah, it's $45 uh, by itself. They include a medical kit from NAR for an extra $100. And that does come with a cat tourniquet and it's got these bungees here on the bottom to mount it and it's got these slots to wrap it um, you can use some straps but what i am planning on using it is this velcro one wrap roll um, it's double-sided and this is velcro brand um so this is the good stuff it's used for like they advertise it for i guess dowels apparently no one heard of a clove hitch or a uh timber hitch and um like cable wrapping is the main thing that people use it for um is uh, cable management but you can use it because it is that double sided um you can wrap it through here and on your velcro belts you can do the same with um mounting molly pouches onto those uh, velcro belts i know a lot of people use this to mount uh, kiwis to their uh, belts and stuff instead of using some of the plastic adapters because then you still get the soft or um, scratchy velcro the hook stuff for your belt whatever you have so you're not losing that bit and causing gaps in your belt to where it's going to sag and not stick properly but this is how I'm going to be planning on mounting it on a belt if I want something a little low profile. And this is very, very basic stuff. Um, this is basically just a bleeder pouch is all I have this set up for since I have this as a main. Um, but this isn't really for me to use specifically on myself. Um, it's not really set up as truly an IFAC. And that's the thing that a lot of people get messed up on is what they plan on using there. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. Um, what a lot of people plan on um, with their IFACs, and I guess we're gonna dive in a little bit into uh, IFAC theory, is your IFAC is to treat you. That's why it's an individual first aid kit. And first aid is a bit of a misnomer. Um, ideally, the acronym should be ITAC for individual trauma aid kit. Um, but it is, an IFAC should be packed for life-saving interventions and life-saving interventions only. No chapstick, no band-aids, no neosporin, uh, nothing like that that is for those things. This is just stuff to save your life. And this I have set up to run on my belt. Um, say I go to like a shooting match or I'm at a class or whatever, they're gonna have uh, like main treatment bags and stuff like that. If it's a good range worth their shit, you should make sure that your guys is, that a class you're going to has that. If not, I would be cautious to go to that class. Um, or like at a range event or something like that, make sure that they are the people that are supporting it and that are running it have some sort of medical plan in case something does go wrong. But this is for something like that, or even for a, uh, I guess SHTF event. Um, to run on the small of my back, or not small of my back, but on uh, on my belt in a real low pro position where it won't interfere with stuff. In that um, this is just bleeding, so this is for me to use either potentially on myself or for other people. So I have a four inch ace wrap uh, because you can use that for a whole multitude of things, two compressed gauze and a uh, thing of combat gauze. I might insert another thing of combat gauze in there or just another uh, compressed gauze to augment that just as a uh, as a bleeder pouch um, it's really not for any of the other things but again this isn't I don't have this set up as a full IFAC if you did want to run something that they have as a full IFAC they have a couple of other um, options they have uh, their stomp kit which I would recommend for using as a full IFAC if you want to go belt mounted because it is quick to patch like this D-TAC, um, D-TAC, D-STAC. D-STAC med pouch, it is quick to attach with uh, one of these um, fast X buckles. Um, so that is something I do like about it, not just being a pouch that opens up and, and stuck to wherever it is on there. 
load bearing equipment. I like something that I can remove. That's why the insert, the innards in this pouch, one just for ease of keeping everything intact, but I can go ahead and open this and everything doesn't go falling out all over the place. Damn, I'm hitting this camera mount hard. Um, so it's just an organizational thing mainly um, that I like that. And then you don't have to sit here and keep going back to a pouch that you've, say you cut all their shit off to go work on them. And now you gotta go dig down where that pouch is that you're treating out of because you never treat out of your own eye pack to work on someone else. This is to save your life. That's why I have a bleeder pouch. Um, this is for working on other people, potentially working on myself. Just uh, if I need to, I can throw this to somebody. Um, or inside an assault pack, you should probably have an extra eye pack at least um, plussed up with some extra shit in it. Um, so this is just a uh, extra plus an extra tourniquet to keep on myself for whatever reason I may need an extra tourniquet. It's always good to keep extras, not just the two minimum that I recommend everybody have. But again, this is just bleeder, not really meant as a full eye pack. That's why I like the small form factor because it's not doing everything. It's something I can throw on my belt. I have a couple different ways of mounting a belt through it. Um, and it just kind of falls out of the way. So for kind of discreet shit or everyday stuff, this, uh, my buddy Wynn has a uh, podcast, Dope Farm Podcast. He did a full review on a whole bunch of these. Um, I actually talked to him about this because I've had this one now for going on four years now. Um, and I've worn it every day that I wear civilian attire, um, not in uniform stuff, because that's not what this is made for. I have cargo pockets in that event. Um, but this is what I wear every day when I'm in regular clothing. Um, it's stained, it's worn, the stitching is coming apart in several places. Um, I probably need to send it to them to get replaced or just buy a new one. Uh, this one runs, I want to say $56.95 on their website it might have been a little cheaper when i got it i think it was around 50 bucks uh yeah 56.95 right now they have a new one that i'm kind of interested to try that is a four-way stretch instead of this is just yeah, i'm pretty sure it's i want to say it's 500 in here if not a thousand um but i'm pretty willing to say this is 500 in here um nylon uh, the only complaint I have about it is there's no stretch or give. So if you put this on too tight, you're going to be constantly adjusting it until you find that right spot to fit you. They do have an extender um, that it comes with if you're wearing boots to wear this over boots. Um, but it holds a decent amount of stuff. It's not a uh, something I would say is this should be the only stuff you ever carry on you ever. But it's a good place to start with a good minimum of things uh just some simple shears i'm probably going to change these out for just a strap cutter um just because i'm really not 100 percent on those shears but here i've got a halo folded like i said inside of that pair of gloves and mpa with lube folded up in here uh, i think i've changed out this is the second chest seal that i've thrown in here change them out every so often just because you know being in the heat can degrade the uh, sticky shit that's on that seal um and then just being on your body with all that heat can start to degrade that a little bit i have one of these h and h micro or mini compression bandages um these are really nice these are like a normal compression bandage they just don't have that cleat so it folds up real small as you can see i really like this for the size factor um, sometimes I do carry a needle in here and if I do, I think I carry it in this spot. Um, but it's not always because this is civilian side shit. Using needles on people's civilian side with the credentials the army makes me have this is kind of a no, no. Um, and I just don't, I really just don't want that there. Um, in case my muscle memory kicks in and I go to needle someone and then I get sued, but depending on where I'm at, what I'm doing, I will throw a needle in there just sometimes I take it out. Um, I've flown with this through uh, TSA and they've never said, I just take it off and throw it in my backpack. They've never said a word. You are allowed to take even full size. Um, oh damn, that's the one thing I don't have on this yet. I haven't thrown in my shears. That's probably the pouch I'm gonna replace this one with is a combo pouch that has shears in it. Um, you should always have shears on you. Um, that's why this one, no shears in it because it's not a main IFAC pouch. 
Um, but you can fly with full size here. Um, full size shears, we'll talk about this in a minute. Um, you can fly with full size, full, full size shears, good God, if I could talk. Full size shears through TSA checkpoints, they are allowed. International things get a little hairy because then you gotta see what the host nation laws are. But in the US, TSA, domestic flights, you are allowed to carry shears on your person um, because they're blunt nose, they're not sharp pointy scissors, they are something, and because they're a medical device, they are allowed. So I have, every time I had to fly commercial, uh, this is, um, I just take it off before I go through security, and then when I get out, I go ahead and throw it back on my leg. Um, depending on how short or long the flight is, but this is something you can take with you if you are flying. That's one of the reasons why I did take the needle out, because uh, I get a little weird about needles and I didn't want a chance of that being an issue. So I just took it out and left it at home. Uh, so these are really great, but like I said, my buddy Wynn at Dope Farm Podcast, go follow him if you haven't. He's got a really, a lot of good stuff, especially if you are in East North Carolina, he talks about a lot of plants, wild edible plants um, to our local area. There's a lot of good resource on that, but he did a full review on a whole bunch of different ones. Um, so you can find one that you think would fit you the best. He talks about price point, everything, all like that. Wears them for a couple weeks at a time with about the same stuff. He wears his tourniquet on his, um, on his ankle kit. That is an option. I prefer the uh, flat pack. And I've got a uh, soft T wide in here. Not the newest, newest, but it is the rounded buckle um, on here. I've had this for two years, maybe two and a half now. And uh, I have the soft loop here. They have it so that you can belt mount this if you want to, but it's not meant for like on a battle belt mounting. It's meant for, so down and dirty, this was designed. Uh, couple guys approached the owner of um, Filster and said they wanted a way to carry their issued uh, soft tea tourniquet while they were on plain clothes duty in a way that wasn't obvious. So they're wearing like short sleeve, button up, untucked shirts and stuff like that. So they wanted something to carry that on their person without it being obviously obtrusive. So this was designed to carry it on their uh, belt line with everything else that they carry underneath that untucked button-up shirt but you can use it just as easily for pocket gear i have this loop depending on where it's at it just i mean i'm not really going to try to stick my finger in that but it just gives me something to to pull on to pull it out keeps it organized so you don't have to have those rubber bands that come with it it's just a uh, another way to uh, skin that cat for carrying a tourniquet on your person um, i really don't have a preference over um cats versus soft tees i like these for you know overt bang bang shoot them up stuff just on ease of use alone um they're more most people are trained on these most people know these most people are comfortable with these if they're trained on tourniquets for my own personal use and for carrying every day i just like the form factor that this has versus um a uh, full-size cat this just kind of disappears into a uh, like a cell phone pocket on the side of that most pants have nowadays or in a cargo pocket it just kind of disappears now fourth option is a clear toiletry pouch uh five pack for like 13.99 on amazon so you can have a whole bunch of these the idea for this is something you can throw in a bag and a glove box um in your shooting bag it's clear, you can instantly see it, you can instantly see what's inside of it, you know what this is, you know what this is for. If you wanted to, you could change the zipper poles out for uh, red 550 cord um, or anything like that. I have another one of these that I have medical tape across the side with training, so I know not to use it for real life because it's a training tourniquet that has been used already for training. So this is another option for some stuff to have. This is obviously a little bit more plussed up than the other ones. Um, cat tourniquet again when I'm doing stuff with other people I just want something that's easy to use uh, gen 6 and gen 7 are still recommended by Kotzi, Um so as long as it hasn't been used gen 6s are still completely okay combat gauze again I just have access to a bunch of it so that's what I have in most of my stuff you don't need it for the most part you're completely okay with some compressed gauze you can get this stuff for like two bucks three bucks 
maybe four bucks at most anything more than that and you're looking at overpaying for some stuff so these i like really well because it is basically and you guys have any experience in the medical field curlex or bandage roll and you want 4.5 inches by four oh, let me go throw this stuff four yards this i got at walmart for 238 250 somewhere around there i haven't checked prices recently but every time i go into a big walmart that has one of these i buy two or three and i buy two or three ace wraps elastic bandage don't go to walgreens they will charge you 10 bucks for one of these and i got this for a dollar 50 at walmart and it does the same thing uh you can use this as you can an ace wrap but you can also make pressure bandages with those as well so real easy way to get a uh, bleeding control kit set up is just some of this. But so compressed gauze, three inch 3M tape. This is the gold standard. Um, anything else and you're cheating yourself. I'm not normally a brand snob on some things, but when it comes to like Sharpies, tourniquets, tape and a few others i am a brand snob and the reason why is nothing beats this 3m tape this shit works really well for what it does it is fucking amazing um i try to keep tape in most of my kits obviously in this one just because of form factor i don't have any in there um and i might rectify that i might not that is one thing i like about the uh selkirk um pouches they have a spot the pouch insert they have a spot for uh this 3m tape to go in i think there's a set for like a two inch roll maybe but you can do a three inch roll um you can get those inserts for really cheap on ebay um and like five and ten packs that's where i got mine for doing classes so i can have rigs set up well not rigs but i can have pouches set up that people can throw on their shit and use for training um if they don't have anything already and they can get an idea of a inexpensive solution to that problem how you can even throw them in a, a canteen pouch with the flap um to use as a gp pouch to use as your your ifag and then it's got some outer stuff on the side if you wanted to throw in some uh some boo-boo shit on the outside of your ifag that's fine but 3m tape is great and in here i have an israeli just because i have a bunch of them for reasons um and i just threw this in here instead of a ace wrap um but i might probably change this out for an ace wrap just for what this is actually i'll probably leave this in here now that i think about it because this is we're throwing to people so like i said and then full size shears for doing all sorts of sheery type cutty cutty things um this kit was really designed for let's say you're doing you know whatever it might be hood rat shit with the boys and uh, someone goes down, you're in like a, a decent enough size group that you have room for someone to dedicate their role to treating people. Instead of carrying an aid bag, he has a assault pack like everyone else because it's a multi-day thing and not everybody has room to carry all that shit unsupported. If everybody carries a couple of these in their bags plus some other shit that the medic or person you've appointed as medical in your group you have a couple of these you can resupply stuff that you've used um and again these aren't perfect but it's a five pack for 13.99 it's just meant to hold shit um it's sitting inside of another bag this isn't meant for like outer use or anything like that there are a couple other options that go up in price um for what you're getting but for the basics, I really, really like this D-Stack pouch um, for the stuff that it does give you, the space that it takes up and the stuff that it can hold inside. I really, really like this form factor. Um, it keeps this rig nice and nice and slim. Um, so you don't want to be carrying around a whole bunch of uh, heavy shit when you're already going to be carrying a bunch of heavy shit. You don't want to add to that. So I like this form factor. This pouch weighs next to nothing, empty, and then you throw the stuff in that you're already going to be carrying. It's just handy to have some extra of this so you can toss this in a backpack. Um, if you wanted to when you were flying, you could throw this in a backpack and have that you can use. Um, the only thing it doesn't have in it is gloves. 
So if you are doing something civilian side, I would recommend putting gloves in because you don't know what other people have. If it's your guys that you're working with, you can feel confident that you know that you're not going to get anything weird from them. So you can do without gloves if you have to, but I would still recommend putting some gloves in here. I just have this as kind of a show aid right now. It's not really filling a role yet. When I do, I will be putting gloves into this. Um, so we did talk a little bit about uh, IFAC theory. So at a minimum, what you guys should have uh, two tourniquets. So I have one outside and then one on the front of the IFAC pouch itself. And that's why I like this, that I don't have to go digging. As opposed to the Selkirk kit, it is inside the pouch on the pouch insert itself. On the outside of it is the other tourniquet. This puts it on the outside of that pouch. Um, but I mean, technically this does count as an insert almost, but it's still external. So it's a little bit easier to see that, yeah, that's got a tourniquet. All this red cordage kind of annotates, yeah, this is a medic pouch. This is a, uh, this is an IFAC. This is a first aid kit and not a, you know, American Red Cross. I want to be a babysitter first aid kit, not an OSHA requirement first aid kit that's full of expired band-aids and aspirin and shit. This is, um, life-saving interventions. So massive hammered, we want tourniquets, at least two. Um, and then, like I said, I'll generally have this bleeder pouch on me. So I have an extra one plus one in my, if I'm wearing OCPs or whatever I'm wearing, generally I like the uh, fatigue pants that have the ankle kit or the ankle pocket on them because I'll throw an extra tourniquet in one of those. Um, just because, you know, Two is one and one is none. I like to have extras of shit just in case on the offhand that I might need them. So at least two tourniquets and then open this up. For the rest of massive hemorrhage, I have, for stuff that I can't put a tourniquet on, I have my packing materials all right here. Um, the only thing again I don't have is tape. I might throw a, uh, some of the new IFACs are coming with a roll of duct tape. I'll probably just throw that um, in here. Just because it works, it takes up a smaller size than that 3M uh, medical tape does, and duct tape does work fairly well. You just don't want to leave duct tape on the skin for too long because when you go to take it off, it's going to pull skin with it. Um, so after March or after massive airway in March is uh, after massive hemorrhaging in March is airway. Everybody gets an MPA. We're not going into crikes. It's not a uh, everybody's skill, so everybody gets an MPA. Going into respirations, we have chest seal and needles in case we need it. Chest seal, if there are any chest injuries that penetrate into that box. Um, after that, we go into circulation. Again, wound packing, if I decide that the tourniquet was put on and it's not needed. And then outside of an IFAC, is where the rest of circulation comes in um but that is like ivs and shit and blood transfusions and other crazy things that we don't need to be getting into so then you have head hypothermia and everything else and that's not stuff you put in an ifac if you wanted to include an eye shield you can put an eye shield in here i'm just not a super fan of eye shields um and then the 1380 card is part of that because you should be filling that out because even if you are doing boob shit or, you know, whatever it is, you know, community defense, you need to have some way to write that information down because say the grid is still up or even if it's down and you're handing off to a guerrilla hospital, which is a longer discussion we can get into at a later point in time, you need something written down more so than just a T on their forehead and blood to let that doctor know what you did to them and where they are injured. So that's where the 1380 really comes into play. So hopefully I explained things um, fairly well and showed you guys a good basic, and that's what this is, is a basic setup for um, battlefield trauma. Uh, anything more than this, you really start getting into above this level, you have like basically CLS, providers and then you start getting into like the the medic portion of shit and then you're looking at like backpacks and stuff and uh bags you throw into vehicles um uh, and then we can get into the discussion of dismount versus truck bags and that's a whole rabbit hole but right now for the basics um i really like this pouch something equally sized um i know a lot of dudes are running the uh, abdominal pouches that fit here um I might get this retrofitted with uh, some loop Velcro on the back side back here. Um, I 
might get some, like a little panel put right here so that I can run a uh, abdominal pouch if I decide to, just because they are really handy and I do like them. Uh, a lot of times I run a fanny pack and that acts much in the same that this does. It's a bleeder. It doesn't have 100% everything that I need for an IFAC. I try to keep as much as possible, but it's mostly just shit like extra gauze, ace wraps. Uh, I try to keep a tourniquet on it, but that tourniquet pouch is coming off and going on here. I'll have to find a different way to uh, keep a tourniquet on that. I might just say fuck it with everything else, with all the other tourniquets that I run. I don't need one on the outside of that bag. I might retrofit some shit onto it, and that's another thing. Don't make your mission work for your gear. Make your gear work for your mission. So if you have something on something that you don't like, modify it. Make the gear work for you. Uh, don't make yourself work for your gear um a great trick i was shown uh, again by my buddy win and uh i don't know if he was the one that created this i doubt it um just because it seems so simple of an idea that it's probably been around much longer than we've been having these discussions is that you take the old uh usgi three mag shingles they even make them now in ocp and you go ahead and uh cut the little bullshit um stupid little buttons because they're not going to work with p mags um i've tried you need to cut those off and you get some uh, bungee pull tabs like most new shingles run and you loop those through some of the molly and then the little uh molly routing mounting strap that they have on the back and you use that to make a uh, bungee shingle that works for any sort of mag you'd want and you can adjust that to i want to say you can make ak mags fit and then i'm not 100 percent. i'd have to go double check but i know you can get p mags to fit in them so if there's something about your gear that you don't like feel free to modify it keep in mind you might be violating some sort of um uh warranty on it but then again, warranty is only as good as the company still existing or being able to fix your gear. If it's in the middle of a firefight, you're not going to be able to send your gear off to get it fixed. So just keep that in mind. Um, modify your gear. Um, I've modified a couple of the uh, bandoliers to work for me. Um, just because they don't work with any mags either because they use those stupid um, buttons. Um, like the snaps, the pull the dot snaps. So... I've modified those with Velcro to work for PMAGs, but yeah, hopefully I went over everything and explained it well enough for you guys to understand uh, some of the options that you have for carrying medical equipment on your person. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me, um, mechmedic at tutanota.com, uh, and then on the blog, uh, stuckpigmedical.com as well uh, those are some of the the best places to try to get a hold of me if you have any questions about anything i do have a class coming up on november 7th to 8th uh, go ahead and go to brush breeder uh his blog um just look up brush breeder blog and that should come up and you can go sign up for the class november 7th to 8th we'll be going over on how to use all this shit when you would want to what each of these would be good for, um, and then how to use all this shit. So, uh, don't get left out there bleeding like a stuck pig. See you later.